In this tutorial, we're going to look at installing the Spring Boot CLI on Windows. The Spring Boot CLI is a command line tool, that's where CLI comes from, that can be used if you want to quickly prototype with Spring. It allows you to run Groovy scripts, which means that you have a familiar Java-like syntax without so much boilerplate code. You don't need the CLI to work with Spring Boot, but it's definitely the quickest way to get a Spring application off the ground. So with that, there's a couple of different ways that we can install this. One of them is to use GBM, the Groovy Environment Manager, which at this time is now called SDK Man. Or we can just run a manual installation like we're going to do today. So here in Windows, I'm going to download the bin.zip file, which I have already downloaded. And I have it here. I'm going to extract this to a folder. I have a, I've set up a folder called Spring. So let's just zip it to there. So if we look and see Spring, we now have this Spring-1.3.0.m5. That is the version I'm working with. So if we jump in there, there are all the files that we need to run the Spring CLI. So there is one more step that we're going to need to do. We need to set up some environment variables for this. So to do so, we're going to right click on my computer, go to properties, and click on advanced system settings, and we'll go into environment variables. Here we're going to set up a variable called spring home, spring underscore home. And we're basically going to point to that installation that we just extracted out. Finally, we're going to update the path to include Spring Home and the bin folder. All right, so once all of that is done, let's open up a command prompt and we should be able to type Spring. And there you go. So I'm actually going to include this in the tutorial, but here is a section in the documentation for using the CLI. So once you have this, once you've installed the CLI, you can run it by typing spring. If you run spring without any arguments, a simple help screen is displayed. So that's all we did last time. We ran spring and it gave us a bunch of available commands like run, test, uh, install, init, that kind of thing. So let's clear this. We're just going to walk through the documentation here and look at a couple options of using the Spring CLI. You can also use help to get more information about any of the supported commands. So let's go ahead and run Spring help and then one of the commands is run. So you'll see it actually gives us some options on what we can pass to this command so we understand why you know and there's a description of what those options are so it just gives us some help helpful information on each of those commands another thing we could do is run spring version so i'm going to go spring version and it'll tell us what version of the cli i'm running next we can actually run a uh, run an application so this will run a spring boot application using the cli so i've taken this basic Spring Boot application. I have created a hello.groovy here in this particular directory. Actually, we need to go to cd c spring. If we do a dir, there's our hello.groovy. So, what we're going to do is run the spring run and then the name of the script, which is hello groovy. And you'll see I hit tab there, give me some completion on that particular file. So if I go ahead and hit enter, it's going to run this script as a Spring Boot application. So the very first time that you run this, it's probably going to take a second. It needs to resolve the dependencies, which means any uh, dependencies that this application needs, it needs to go out and download them. So because I cleared everything out for this particular tutorial, I'm, a, I'm actually downloading everything again. So it's downloading things like uh, the Spring Core, Spring Web, Web MVC, that kind of stuff. So 
So as you can see, everything runs through and it says it's been started up. So if we go ahead and go to localhost 8080 and you'll see hello world. So again, this was just a basic, real basic web app that displays hello world in the browser. So to get out of this, we can just hit control C and yes, and we're back to our command prompt. So some other things we can do, uh, we can use grab annota uh, annotations to pull down dependencies here. We're just gonna kind of jump over that. One other thing I did wanna look at is, um, oh, you can also run tests straight from the command line. So if you have some tests, you can just run spring test and then the name of the tests. And uh, you can run multiple Groovy sources at once if you needed to. You can package your application. So if you want to use the jar command to create a self-contained executable, you can do that as well. Uh, one of the other things I like is you can initialize a project. So you may be familiar with this. If you go to start.spring.io, there is a, we're gonna cover this later in the course, but there's a easy way to get going with Spring Boot, and that's using the Spring Initializer. Well, you can actually run that from the command line using the Spring CLI. So I would say look through the uh, documentation on things that you can do. Uh, one of the nice commands though is they, there's a list option from the init command. So if we run spring init dash list, this will actually give us um, all of the different options that we have for creating our spring boot application. So you have to just kind of dig through here, but this basically gives us everything that the web interface gives us, but we can do it from the command line. So that's pretty cool. So that's really all there is to it. Um, I'll go ahead and include both of the documentation links to where you can download it and the documentation for using the CLI. So I hope that helps. That's all for this one.